Today, we're going to be going over a wide receiver football IQ quiz to test your knowledge of the position. So if you're not familiar with our quiz style videos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a pre-snap look like the following. I'm going to ask you a series of questions about it, how you would run a route versus a certain coverage, give you guys a chance to pause the video, think about your answer, and then we're going to play the clip full speed and talk about why your answer was either right or wrong. So for this first example here, how would you guys run a corner route versus this specific coverage look? So a 10 to 12 yard corner route. Football is over here where I'm drawing these arrows. So how would you guys run a corner route versus this specific coverage? You guys can go ahead and pause the video and think about your answer. So pause the video. All right, let's break this thing down. So first things first, when I come up to the line, when it comes to picking a route, when it comes to having a plan of the route, I have to be able to identify the DB's leverage and the distance away from me. So his leverage is going to be outside shade, right? Which makes sense because this wide receiver is lined up fairly close to the hash. This is one-on-ones. His split is cut down. So a smart DB is going to line up outside leverage to not give up what? The outside route or to make it tough on the wide receiver to run an outside breaking route or get an outside release. So his job is just to hold his leverage to the outside and force everything to the inside. Now, the second thing that we want to look for is the distance away from him. So in this case, he's probably about like, I would say like two to three yards away from me outside shade press, right? So if I have to run this corner route, I'm not going to be able to just close the space and go to the outside. He is taught to not give that up. So he'll get hands, force me to the sideline, and then I'll be running a corner route, but I'll be right on the sideline. That's not enough space for the quarterback. So what I have to do is I have to close the distance with the DB. I want to bring this line of scrimmage to him. Almost think like you're trying to step on his toes, give him a fake to the outside to attack his leverage, then take the inside release. And when I take that inside release, that's where I can get separation at the top of the route. Now, this is actually a bad example of this from this wide receiver. He does everything correctly with his release, but he makes a common mistake that a lot of receivers make that gets him locked up on this route. So we're going to talk about what that mistake is as well. And then I'm going to show an example of Cooper Cup running this exact same route versus this look and doing it correctly and avoiding this mistake. So let's play at full speed. So he comes off the ball here, closes space, great move. But again, this DB is still able to to stay on that outside hip and honestly makes a great play downfield. So why is he able to do that? So again, like I said, he did everything right. He attacked his leverage. He closed the distance with him, gave him a great fake to the outside. But right here is what makes or breaks the ability to get separation on an inside release with an outside breaking route. And that is something called getting skinny. Getting skinny is when you run hip to hip with the DB, right? So I could close the space to them all I want. I could get him to keep his leverage all I want. But if I take this really wide angle right here, what am I not doing? You see how he takes this like kind of like step back almost over towards the middle. What am I not doing? I'm not getting vertical, right? So I'm taking a wide angle to get vertical. And I'm not saying that this receiver is afraid of contact because he's probably not. Just as a younger receiver, high school receiver, we can't be afraid of contact with a DB. We know to take an inside release, the only hand I have to beat is his inside hand. So when I close the space and I give him a move to the outside, I want to try to run as tight as I can. My mindset should be, okay, I got him to move. I am going to attack this outside hand. I'm going to chop it with my hand, swim underneath, whatever the case may Maybe, but I need to go hip to hip with him, aka getting skinny, so I could stack him. And that's essentially when a DB is running directly behind us. But because he takes this wide angle off of this thing, what does that allow the DB to do? It allows him to recover and beat us to the landmark of the break. So now we're in that awkward spot where I can't slip under him and throw by, because that's something that you could do here. You could take this inside arm, swat him on the shoulder, on the hip, but on a corner, it's preferable that you stack him and break this thing off. So that's why, guys, because he did not get skinny. So I'm going to play this full speed one more time. And then, like I said, we're going to show Cooper Cup doing the correct version of this. But remember, guys, we have to get skinny. Run hip to hip with the DB. Do not be afraid of any type of hand contact. Now, before I show this Cooper Cup example, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you would like to train with myself and my staff of coaches this offseason, we're going to be coming out to 12 more states across the country for two day long QB and wide receiver training camps. Everything you see on this side of the column over here is completely sold out. Our camps in Portland, Dallas, Nashville, Chicago, all completely sold out, but we still have more opportunities for you guys to train with us. We're going to be coming out to Buffalo, Atlanta, Houston, Philly, Detroit, Boise, and Los Angeles. Guys, all of those camps will sell out probably two months in advance, so we would love to have you there. So check out that very first link in the description below, guys, if you would like to attend any one of our off-season camps. Again, very first link in the description below. It's where you can sign up and get all the information to attend. So guys, we'd love to have you there. Let's get back to this video. So now, like we said, we're going to show this example of Cooper Cup. So what does he have? 
Perhaps same type of outside leverage. He's running an inside breaking corner route or inside release corner route, if you will. But I want you to pay attention to what he does with his shoulder and what he does with this arm. So he gives this move to the DB, but you see how he's getting skinny. He's leaning into him so he could stack over the top, give a move and win on this corner route, right? So again, guys, remember he attacks him. He does the exact same thing that the last receiver did. He closes the space. He's stepping vertical. He's attacking that leverage to get him to hold. But when he takes that inside release, he doesn't go this way. His hip is as tight as he can and watch what arm that Cooper Cup beats here outside arm. He has no concern with this DB's right arm. That's the problem with a lot of receivers with hand technique. They're so worried about fighting both hands. Oh, what hand movement should I use? They practice all this stuff with their receiver coach at the school. Be focused on one hand to beat. The only hand that you need to worry about with an inside release is his inside hand. Can he recover with the outside hand? For sure. But we're off the press. The goal of the DB in press is to disrupt timing. And I don't let him do that by getting skinny and knowing which hand to beat. And you see how Cooper Cup's dipping the shoulder, dipping his pad level. That helps us get skinny with this DB and get into his frame. We always want to be tight with him. Don't run away from him in that sense. So if that's how you guys said you were going to run that route, that is 100% correct. So we kind of showed you guys the positive example of it, even with the right, or the positive example with the right idea and a negative example, even with the right idea from that receiver. Because remember guys, it's more about just knowing what to do. It's knowing what to do and having the technique to be able to execute it. Okay. So now next example here, I know this is a little bit tough to see just because there's a lot of white on here, but right here is what we're looking at. So how would you guys, and it's going to be a similar format, guys. This first example is going to be right idea, but incorrect. And then second example is going to be right idea, but correct technique. So how would you guys run a slant route versus this specific coverage? So how would you guys run a slant route versus this specific coverage? So you guys can go ahead and pause the video and think about your answer. So pause the video. All right, let's break this thing down. So first things first here, what do we want to identify? Distance per TB, the DB has between me and him. And then also we want to look at his leverage. So how we can tell a DB's leverage, especially this angle, if you're a receiver who you know likes to study film, you want to study different coverage looks, whatever, look at the midline of a DB stance. So you see the midline. I just drew it on the screen here. If his midline is even with the wide receiver's front foot, that means that he has inside leverage because you see how his left foot here is shaded a little bit to the inside. It means he has inside leverage. It's not a huge inside leverage look, but he does have inside leverage. If his midline is even with the receiver's back foot, that means he has outside leverage. If the midline is even with the receiver's midline, that means he's head up. So you go inside, head up, or outside. Now, when he's inside leverage and I got to run a slant, obviously, what's his goal? We learned this with the other side. Don't give up the inside release. So if I have to run a slant, it's kind of a problem, right? So if you guys said that you would use something called a diamond release, that is correct. A diamond release is where you take three hard steps at the DB's outside shoulder, outside hip. The goal is to get him to open up the gate and think we're running what? Think we're running a fade, right? So this, this example here of a wide receiver trying to do that, but it ultimately doesn't work. So let's play at full speed. So he does the right release. One, two, three. But this DB stays patient and is able to lock this thing up. So why? Why is he able to do that? Because this wide receiver didn't sell vertical with his strides. So guys, there are three ways that you could get a DB to think that we're running deep, right? The first one's kind of obvious. You got to make sure that you're running hard, right? If you're not running hard and you're trying to get a DB to open up the gate within the first five yards, he will not open up. A lot, there's a lot of information out there. A lot of receiver coaches or trainers or whoever the hell they call themselves will say, oh, you want to have pace on a route. You never want to run full speed on a route. Try getting a DB to turn his hips within five yards, even 10 yards without actually running hard. So when you attack that outside shoulder and hip, you got to run hard. And I think this receiver does that, right? Then the second thing is going to be the body language. You got to make sure that your hips and your shoulders, your head, everything looks like you're trying to take this outside release, speed release fade, right? And he has that. But the thing is, DBs are smart. They are not going to believe you're going vertical if you're taking these choppy steps. Because when you run a fade, you're taking long strides. You're trying to separate. You're trying to get over the top. So if I take these choppy strides off the line of scrimmage, one, two, three, but I'm not really going anywhere, that DB is going to stay patient. He will stay in phase, aka his hips will be like almost like square to the sideline, if that makes sense, or square to us. And then our worst nightmare happens on a diamond release. We end up running right into him. We have to make it believable with my strides. So let's play this full speed and then we will show the positive example of this and again this is the right idea on the route if that's what you guys said to do that's 100 correct but, but remember it's more about knowing it's not about just knowing what to do and it's also not just having great technique it's a combination of both to be a great receiver you got to know what to do and you got to know how to execute so let's watch this wide receiver here so same concept inside shade press he's running a diamond release slant so watch what he does here look at his strides look how long his strides are he's gaining ground he has speed his body 
body language is committed, right? So again, he attacks him. Look at these strides. One, long two, long three. All three of those strides, his hips, his shoulders, he's got good speed to the outside. That is what's going to get a DB to open up the gate. That's what's going to make him think, oh crap, it's a fade, and then we can slip underneath. So guys, within the first five, you got to make sure we are taking long strides and gaining ground. Don't be choppy with your steps because the choppy steps will get us locked up. So let's play this again full speed one more time. Great job by that receiver taking long strides to open up the DB and then obviously making a play upfield. All right, so now, Next example here, next question, how would you guys run a 10-yard dig route? 10-yard dig versus this specific look, this specific press coverage look. So how would you guys run a 10-yard dig versus this specific press coverage look? So you guys go ahead and pause the video and think about your answers. So pause the video. All right, let's break this thing down. So first things first, what are we looking for? We're looking for leverage, and we are also looking for distance between me and the DB, right? So now we see here, and again, this angle is a little weird. It's tough to look at the DB's midline like we were talking about in the last example. A good thing when you're watching film to look for a DB's leverage, pay attention to the numbers and the alignment on the field. So obviously, I watch a lot of film because I put these clips out here for you guys constantly on a daily basis, right? So we're always looking for new ways and easy ways to be able to identify things on film. And this can help you guys, especially if you're studying huddle for your team, looking at routes of other guys, whatever the case may be. So you see how this receiver's lined up like middle of the numbers, but you see how this DB stance is more so on the top of the numbers, right? So that tells you that he's inside leverage. So we have inside shade press, and this DB is about two yards away from me to the inside. So what do I got to do with my release here? If I got to run a dig, will I be able to just close the space and take the inside release? No, this is very, very similar to that corner route that we talked about in the very beginning of this. I'm not going to be able to force it. His job is do not let us go to the inside. And we know that based on his leverage. That's why it's important to know that. So what I have to do is I got to close the distance, right? We know that. Bring the line of scrimmage to his toes, attack his leverage, give him a fake inside, and take the outside release. Now, when we take this outside release, there's two ways that this could go. We could either attack him, take the outside release, and he's right on my hip. Great news about a dig route is you can drop your hips and slip underneath. It's not like that corner route or maybe a post route, right? And again, you could do that on a post route, but it's just not as favorable of a break. On a dig, you can. Or what we could do is we attack him, we get skinny, of course, like we were talking about in the first example, and I stack him and I could give him a move to the outside like a rocker step and run a dig. So if that's what you guys said, those two scenarios, that's pretty much correct. So let's watch what this receiver does and we'll break it down a little bit. This is actually a correct example. Puts the brakes on, gets that DB to commit his hips, and then he's able to win on the dig. So let's talk about it, right? So again, comes off the ball. Could he have probably closed a little bit more space? I would have liked to see him close a little more space and threaten this DB's leverage a little more because this DB plays it well. Like he's right on our hip. You know what I mean? I think if this DB stays a little bit more patient and doesn't open up the gate, this break doesn't go that way because he didn't close space with his release. So you've got to make sure, fellas, if that DB's two yards off, don't just run away because it's going to be it's going to be hard for us to stack him if I don't close the space and step on his toes. And remember, guys, when we close the space and step on his toes, since this is an outside release, what hand do we have to be? His outside hand, that's the only hand we were worried about. So you could take your right hand and chop over the top of his hand. You could take your right hand and swim underneath, whatever the case may be, but that's what helps us get that outside release and put us in a better position to stack. But again, I would like to see this receiver get to here with this move rather than here because that allows that DB to commit and cut off the angle. If this DB stays more patient, because I honestly don't think this receiver sold it that great. I think he, this break wasn't the best. I think he slowed down a little bit. I think this DB could stay obviously more patient because if you see that speed change in a receiver, you don't want to open up that gate. But I feel like he opened up the gate just a little bit early. But again, that allows us to slip back underneath, swap by, and win on this dig and not force the route to his leverage. So that's a textbook example. Example here, could the route have been better? Absolutely, route could have been better. We want to step on the toes, threaten him to the inside. And when I push up vertical, I want to run hard. Either stack or get that DB to fully open the gate, think him we're going deep, and we put the brakes on. So let's play this again, full speed one more time. So that's how you run that dig versus inside shade press.